All right, let's see what our ASMR smooth toned father figure is going to talk to us. Ray likes to comment on our, our highlights. I appreciate that. I dig, Ray. Let's see. Promises that will never be met, says Ray. Ooh, we're getting a little spicy. We're getting a little spicy. Talking Star Citizen. Let's check it out. Hello, this is Danny Raymond, the voice behind Ray's guide. Ten years is a long time. Things that you thought were certain weren't. Changes you never expected to happen do. The way you think things are isn't. And certain things you would attain, you can't. Time doesn't let you see what you will accomplish in 10 years, nor will it allow you to go back and unsay things you shouldn't have said. Anyone who says that they have never had to break a promise is a liar. But the internet, on the other hand, does not have that kind of subtlety. Going back 10 <laughs> years and everything still sounds as certain as it felt 10 years ago, which is convenient if you're looking to shout about broken promises and how the game will never be finished, whether it be for worldview validation or clicks. But neither Boom. can you say that nothing said a decade. Boom. Hold on a second. Ray dropping bombs right there, dude. There's some truth bombs right there by, by my father figure, dude. It go matters that things said have an expiration date. How do you square that? How do you separate what from 10 years ago should be taken seriously, which what is just senseless pounding on the table to make an issue of the fact that the world changes in unpredictable ways? Or maybe we want to demand that everything turn out in the game exactly as we expected, specifically because nothing else in our life does. I can't go through every promise made about the game in one video, so I'm instead going to give categories and examples as a starting point for everyone's discussion. And I'm sure many of you are going to disagree because I'm saying things you don't want to hear. But that is what I do a lot of. like my father. So, category one, things rendered irrelevant by progress. Let me start with the simple, private servers. There used to be a day when you could configure a high-end computer, put a Linux distro on it, download the server program, and get a business class package from your ISP with a fixed IP address. Publish a DNS record for it, and voila, private server. But Star Citizen is not one program running on one computer. It is utilizing a whole suite of programs running on a whole suite of various That'd AWS awesome services. Cut. It would have to be extensively re-engineered to run outside of the service environment of AWS. You can't create your own AWS data center and some system in your garage. You would have to contract and manage the entire identical service set from AWS that CIG has. I shudder at the cost and complexity and doubt even the availability to an individual user. Now, what could happen in the future would be that CIG could offer, for a price reflecting their cost, setting up a private shard and giving you a limited configurability of your private shard. But an old-timey private server on some system that you own yourself? Not going to happen. Ever. The next category are promises that were never possible, and complaining about them or spending money on them will never change them from impossible to possible. And the one example that I want to use for this is the single global shard. Because as long as there are reaction time critical elements in Star Citizen, dogfighting and shootouts, even mining, then the speed of light ping penalty for being on the opposite side of the world from the server is going to immediately have two-thirds of the world demanding a shard that doesn't discriminate against them. And no degree of backer money can make the speed of light faster or the size of the Earth smaller. I've seen some suggestions that they spread the planets around the world, say have Pyro running on one continent, Stanton on the other, etc. But that would just change the discrimination argument into who got the better planets and who. It doesn't really solve the problem. The third category is a strange one. That is things that might have already been met, just depending on how you look at them. My example here is the stretch goal of there being a limited number of places that you can fight for control over against other players. They were originally presented in lore as being <laughs> gold horizon stations. Now, we already have places that we can fight for control over. Jump Down 2, for example, and also the 3.18 Security Post Korea. Yep. And I'm willing to guess that since the retake location is now a mission module, we will be seeing more of them. So, is this stretch goal met? Or is it not met until they actually implemented them as Gold Horizon space stations? Good question. And a pretty good test of whether you tend towards being a white knight or a refundian as far as this project is concerned. The fourth category extends to promises where the whole underlying presumption of the promise has been transformed. 
And this is the realm of the 100 star systems. In one respect, we already have 100 star systems. Look at the web version of the star map, and there they are. 100 star systems with overview specifications okay, of the planets and moons, each one of them. In the context and years in ago, that really it, wasn't right? much more than what we were expecting to get. Right, right. Just a handful of static landing zones in each one of those. So you needed a hundred such limited places to get a big explorable very, area. Very quickly. It's just but now look at the scope the and scale wave. of just Stanton. Millions right, of kilometers right. of land space, rivers, oceans, caves, multiple outposts, ruins yeah. and such. A hundred systems all built out to the scope and detail of Stanton would indeed take many decades. And honestly, for many of these systems, there is no point at all in expecting that to happen. Is there any point at all, for example, detailing out any of the Vandal systems to a Stanton level of detail? I doubt any player is ever going to be able to do more. It'll, it'll always be worked on. Like, literally. Like, this work is always going to keep going. He could be right. This could be, like, a decade De decade or decades long type thing but like they do have tools that auto generate there are there are things they did not have that they do now that they do now have uh and and like we talked about the work that they're doing on pyro is the same work they're doing on a lot of these other systems but they have not revealed it but they're the work's going on the work's it's happening it's happening under the covers they're not releasing any of that we saw the the leak from 2016 about the the work that was being done on terra that was what that was seven years ago. So you can guarantee that Terra's got work. You can guarantee that systems that are involved with Squ Squadron 42 have some at least light-based work happening by devs over at Cloud Imperium. So I know that a lot of these systems aren't just on the arc map. They're actually being worked on. And a quick look and run mission into the Vandal systems. So the real question is, how many of these hundred star systems in lore do we have to build out to a Stanton not, level of detail? Not many. Which is the detail we have come to Listen, both like and again. It's not going to. It's not going to take many systems for us to feel satiated or satisfied. We're always going to want more because the promises that we are given. That's 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 just part of part of human condition, human nature. But I don't think it would take much more than a handful of star systems very similarly designed like Stanton is for us to feel like there's more space. Hell, Stanton feels big. Like when you really think about it and I hear all the people get upset and say, oh, it's only Stanton, it's only one system. When's the other systems going to come online? I kind of laugh in a weird way because what Stanton is right now is much bigger than anything else I've ever played, you know? So like you have to realize like how far we've come just in that. So having like a handful of systems that are laid out like Stanton, I think is going to be like, hey, all right, it's feeling alive. It's feeling like a system. And, and I don't think it's going to take many for many people to be satisfied. But you're always going to have the people that are upset at everything. They're going to be like, well, there's not 100 yet. There's not 100. <laughs> right? Right? That used to. Let's call it being Stantonized. Before we all accept that this universe is more than big enough to keep us happy for conceivable future. Right. Unless, of course, you just want to forever be complaining about unmet promises. Which well, brings uh, me of course, uh, of course, there's going to be plenty of content creators out there talking about that because that what get them the monetization. They want to monetize people. They want them clickety clacks. They need them. They got to have them. So they're going to always give you that point of view because it's clickable. And then you support it. And there's I'm not going to name the, the content creators out there like that, but there are more than a handful out there. There's more more than the systems that we're seeing here on star citizen content creators that are literally creating dissent kind of content uh hater bait for you to click on so they can monetize you they're out there everywhere and a lot of people fall for it a lot of people fall for that fifth and likely most controversial category promises that should have never been regarded as promises at all having followed this game for a decade i've seen a lot about how game development happens it starts with an idea Ideas become Dream. design documents. Design documents become specifications. Specifications become sprints to achieve a particular tier of features of implementation. And a whole lot of things can change along the way. Absolutely. For example, this shows the prospector drilling a hole in the ground. These videos show prospectors drilling holes in the ground many times from different angles. How many backers paid for the prospector based on the expectation that it would drill holes in the ground? And nobody cares about that because mining gameplay is fine. Even far better the way it turned out. It's it's great. In fact, there's a lot of depth to the mining right now, and it's going to continue to be evolved upon. I mean, come on, you know, like this is the thing people don't get. Like all these things, it, it could, it very well could. They could go back to this, and they could actually design this into the ship, right? They could, they could, they could evolve it, right? And, and that's what we always see in Star Citizen. We see this evolution of game mechanics. We see it. We see it all the time. 
but I guess you could say it is a broken promise that the prospector does not mine by drilling holes in the ground. If that is your goal, you can demand that it was an unmet promise. And, and you will have plenty of content creators out there that will, will bitch about shit like that because it gets in the monetization. It gets in the clicks. And, like, frankly, I really wish people would stop clicking that type of content because, like, supporting that literally just brings more trash to my videos, to, 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 to my reactions. I don't like to watch those types of videos. But there are a lot of people out there that are addicted to that type of content. Personally, my, my own taste is like, eh. I like valid criticisms. I love valid criticisms. You know, I'm not I'm not super white knight here thinking, you know, all dreams and giggles and, you know, uh, magical stardust. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not... <laughs> like, let's be real. We're rational adults. You know what I mean? There's been a lot of failures. There's been a lot of trips along the way on this on this project, for real. We've got to hold uh, them accountable so that we can see things getting fixed. Absolutely. Like, that needs to happen. But, like, people who take it on the opposite side of the extreme and all they're trying to do is monetize you because they just need that click them clickety clacks and they successfully do it because it's almost a trap and they're habitual you'll notice the you, you know and this just isn't lo, you know defined or, or, or the locale is not just star citizen content this is this is all content creation on youtube you will see like a gravitation of that because people uh, are just addicted to like the bad the bad the bad the bad we got to like jump off that train for a moment we got to realize like what they're trying to do. I just had this conversation with Starlet this morning. She commented on one of the videos and she said, you know, DG, I feel like right now it's like, hey, uh, uh, I understand what you're saying about this, the, the scope of this game. This is what she says to me. And she says, but you know what? Like, I'm just going to stop like feeding into that because of what I'm seeing as far as the progress. And, and, I, and I said, hey, listen, you gotta have dreamers. You gotta have people that are able to dream. Think about Thomas Edison, right? <laughs> like, imagine if everybody was just like, oh, the light bulb, sure, okay, dude, we got candles, okay? Or, 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 or like Ford with the car. Oh, we're cool with horses. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, it's important to actually like really get behind people that are visionaries that are supporting an experience that you have not played yet. It is very important and it's the hardest thing to do to support that, right? Because you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> it's, it, it requires a level of faith and it's easy to look at that and say, well, oh, 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 okay. Well, like you're just going to fall in line with, with, with the white knights, uh, DG, and you're just going to believe everything that they're telling you. And it's like, no, 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 no. I'm not a kiddo. I don't fall for that. Uh, you know, I'm a rational dude chilling out with my homies here, uh, uh, watching watching what is they like to watch. And, and, and frankly, I've been involved with this project for over 10 plus years now since 2014. I know what they're capable of. I've seen the progress they've done. And I told Starlight that. I said, you know what? I think it's important to realize that, you know, just because we think it's not possible, right, with the current tech that's out there doesn't mean that they're not going to work and, and strive to achieve those goals. It's easy to roll your eyes. It's easy to be a, a naysayer. It's easy mode to be a naysayer. I mean, if all I did was just jam down negative negativity, negativity on this, that would be the easiest thing for me to do just to spout off a whole bunch of negativity, be completely salty about everything that I see and like completely like go blow up and get successful out of it. I have too much integrity. I want to believe in dreamers. You know, like I've seen how far they've come. Have they tripped along the way? Yes. Have they gone backwards sometimes? Yes, 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 yes. What they're trying to achieve is admirable. Just because it's not possible or you don't think it's possible to happen doesn't mean it's not going to be. They told Thomas Edison there was no way. How many times you try to invent the light bulb? Henry Ford with the car, the Wright brothers with the airplane, right? I know, I know, like, you know, the analogy, I'm comparing that to, you know, what, what we're, what we're going to see out of them. But I'm a gamer and I always wanted experiences like this. I want huge fleet battles. I think that's just as awesome as the airplane. Call me crazy, but I'm a gamer and I want to experience where like I have large ships battling each other and like people are walking around in ships, hundreds of people fighting hundreds of other people, thousands of people going at it. And just because right now that's like th th that might be a pipe dream to some people, it might be like fantastical and way out there in the future. And uh, at least they're trying. Show me somebody else who's doing what they're doing. Show me anybody else out there that's doing what they're doing. I don't want to be easy mode. I don't want to roll my eyes. I don't want to make the negative clickety clack. I don't want to be super successful right away because that's easy mode. I want to believe in the dreamers. I want to support them. I'll hold them accountable like an adult, <laughs> but I want to see it. 
Because as a gamer, passionately in my heart, that's the game I always wanted to play. That's why I came to this title. That's why I played Elite Dangerous until they went off and veered left. And I said, you know what? I'm done with Elite Dangerous because I see where it's going. I see the developers are making stupid decisions. We're going to watch a video from Obsidian Ant today who, who literally covered <laughs> Elite Dangerous from the very beginning. And he switched over to other content because the game is dying. The game is dead as far as I'm concerned. And it's because they made bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. Now, has Chris made bad decisions? Absolutely. <laughs> but, like, they keep moving forward. They keep being open and transparent with their content. Unlike any other developer I know out there, I haven't seen anybody try to do this. So I'm going to keep supporting, and I'm going to do the hard thing. I'm going to not roll my eyes. I'm going to be the person that says, okay, yes. I want to be that. I'd rather be that person than the easy mode rolling eye guy, naysayer guy. I don't want to be that guy. That's completely easy mode. And I, I, I just go through a litany of content creators out there because 75 to 80% of people that are out there are going to want your monetization. They're going to want to get your click and they're going to want to monetize you and they're going to feed you like, oh, they're not doing this or they're not doing this or oh, la, 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 la. I'm never going to be that guy. I'm not going to be the easy mode salty guy. I'm just not. <laughs> Rather than an idea that has evolved. But early on, there were a lot Absolutely, of ideas Aether. and a lot of questions and a lot of Q&As. Questions at shows, questions in videos, even a whole regularly scheduled, dedicated set of questions and answered called 10 for the Chairman. Questions that were answered not from Thank specifications you. or design documents, but pretty much from what seemed to Chris Roberts to be a good idea at the time. But they sounded like promises rather than ideas. And when they are coming from the horse's mouth, how do you really know the difference? 10 for the chairman, 10 I new miss, promises I miss it. every week. Or maybe. <laughs> Thanks, children. Right. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. See you. See you, Anarchy. Love you, bro. Super mod Anarchy, our art director is now leaving. He's got to live his boring life now. I'm so sorry, Anarchy. I am so sorry. May the heart of DG360 live inside of every one of us, including you, Anarchy, when you go back to your job and you got to deal with your boss. Give him a kick in the nuts and say that was from DG360. No promises at all. That disclosure we click by every time we make a transaction, the whole reason why this is called a pledge for a project, the reason why it may never be called released because so many things were said to be tied to that word. And thank you, children, make a for that subscription. That everything is subject to change. And from a certain vantage, nothing at all is a promise. But I can't be satisfied with that as a conclusion. In fact, I can't really be satisfied I know, with I missed it at so all. I know, I missed so bad sketch. The it's old just 300 was like race car to satisfactory at all. But I could say that also about my whole life. Now for an update on our giveaways. First, we have the 10,000 <laughs> subscriber giveaway. Listen, listen, Ray, Ray, listen. I, I kind of agree with what Sketch said earlier. Like, I, I have my moments where I disagree with Ray. Like, you know, like, I'd say, like, 70, 30 for me. Like, 70% of the stuff that I watch, I'm like, okay, yeah, 30% I disagree with. But that's the spice of life. You don't want to watch an echo chamber. Like, don't watch don't watch channels that's just, like, an echo chamber of your own thoughts, please. And I know my audience, they're not like that. DG360 audience, awesome. Very open-minded people, right? I like that. They, they they listen to the differences of opinion and they say, okay, you know, like they, they take some time, you know, to, to think about other points of view, right? Which is why I love this community. You guys are rocking it. Thanks for, for, for watching this. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you, you're liking it. Consider becoming a member. Uh, and let's, let's see what, what's next, Pepe. What is next?